Now, the last thing I'm going to do is instead of dissolving the spider robot across its UV, I'm instead going to do it in um, a view space or position space. So I'm going to create a node, create a position node. And what this will do is it will create a UV either in world space, so we can actually move the spider robot around and it will dissolve depending where it is in the world. Object space, so rather than wrapping it around the UV, because our UV for our mesh might not be ideal for the dissolve, it'll actually do it based on the object's um, vertex positions or the view space, so in the direction of the camera. And the reason why I'm showing you this is so that you can use these nodes and play around with and change different settings and have different results very quickly. So if I now plug this position node into simple noise, we notice that based off the view position, so let's save that and go back to here. As I now fly around my scene, you'll notice that this dissolve texture is being applied from the view position from the camera. So we get this kind of weird uh, warping effect um, using the screen as the UV as opposed to the spider robot. It looks pretty strange. If we go back and change this to object space and save the uh, graph again, you'll notice that uh, it's actually not as difficult to see, but it's actually dissolving it based off of the um, robot's mesh as opposed to its UV. So it's getting a slightly nicer dissolve. And if I go back to this position and set something like uh, world space, it means that I can grab the spider robot and move the spider robot around in the world. And you'll notice that, um, if I move the spider robot around the world, notice that the spider robot is actually being dissolved as it moves around. So kind of the point of me showing you this, all these different effects and tricks, is that you don't need to create all of the functionality to do these very unique effects using world space stuff, object stuff, uh, view position, noise, um, dissolving and things like that. You can instead do all of this entirely with the built-in nodes that Shadograph provides. And of course, if we wanted to, we could hook up this dissolve amount to uh, the animation system or modify it by script. So as our robot enters the game, it dissolves in and then starts walking around and uh, doing whatever spider robots do. So that's the end of this kind of run through, uh, entry of Shadergraph, uh, covering a bunch of different nodes that you can uh, tweak and modify. There's a few other things I want to point out. The first one is that this shader graph window can actually be docked to certain areas in the inspector. So treat this as like the scene view, game view, inspector, where you can rearrange them. You can actually take this tab and dock it side by side. So you'll notice here that we have our scene view at the top and we have shader graph here. And you can actually make tweaks and changes. So if I now go into here and let's dissolve our spider robot a bit and change this to view uh, position save the asset, we then have the change update live in the scene view. Well, not live, but when the asset saved, but the iteration is very, very quick. 